topic in your subject, financial accounting and reporting, is the introduction to accounting. These are our learning objectives. Define accounting. Describe the nature and purpose of accounting. Give examples of branches of accounting. State the function of accounting in a business. Differentiate between external and internal users of accounting information. Narrate the history or origin of accounting. State the forms of business organization. And state the types of business according to their activities. Let's define first accounting. Accounting is a process of identifying, recording, and communicating economic information that is useful in making economic decisions. So there are three important elements in the definition of accounting. These are identifying, recording, and communicating. Let's discuss this further. In identifying, the accountant analyzes each business transaction and identifies whether the transaction is an accountable event or non-accountable event. This is because only accountable events are recorded in the books of accounts. Non-accountable events are not recorded in the books of accounts. Ano ba kasing accountable events? Accountable events are also called economic events. This affects the assets, liabilities, equity, income, or expenses of a business. So kapag may effect siya sa assets, liabilities, equity, income, or expenses, consider siya as accountable events. At dahil accountable events siya, dapat siyang ma-record sa books of accounts. So kapag wala siyang effect sa assets, liabilities, equity, income, or expenses, consider siya as non-accountable events at hindi siya kailangang i-record sa books of accounts. Another essential element is the recording. So in recording, the account recognize, recognizes or records the identified accountable events. So kapag nag-record siya, this process is called journalizing. After journalizing the the accountant then classifies the effects of the event on the accounts. This process is called posting. So, ano yung tinatawag na i- i- effect daw niya sa accounts? Ano yung accounts? So, account is the basic storage of information in accounting. For example, sa cash, land, sales, etc. Lastly, Communicating. At the end of each accounting period, the accountant summarizes the information processed in the accounting system in order to produce meaningful reports. This is important because information processed in the accounting system is useless unless it is communicated to interested users. Accounting information is communicated to interested users through accounting reports the most common form of which is the financial statements. Accounting is a process with the basic purpose of providing information about economic activities intended to be useful in making economic decisions. So, ito yung nature ng accounting. There are three types of information provided by accounting. Quantitative information, qualitative information, and financial information. Quantitative information or information expressed in numbers, quantities, or units. For example, ilan ang nabenta mo for the year, ilan ang sales mo for the year. So, that's quantitative information. Qualitative information or information expressed in words or descriptive form. It is found in the notes to financial statements as well as on the face of the other components of financial information. Uh, financial statements. So, ito yung dinidescribe niya yung mga naging transactions mo for the year. Lastly, financial information or information expressed in money. Financial information is also quantitative information because monetary amounts are normally expressed in numbers. For example, magkano ang naging sales mo for the year? 
So, these are financial information. Magkano ang total expenses mo for the year? So, for the functions of accounting in business, so there are two. Accounting is often referred to as the language of business because it is fundamental to the communication of financial information. Sabi nga kanina, it is useless unless it is communicated to interested users. Sino ba tong users na to? Sabi sa functions of accounting in business, it is to provide external users with information that is useful in making investment and credit decisions. And it is to provide internal users with information that is useful in managing the business. So there are two mentioned users, the external users and the internal users. Let's discuss this further. Internal users are those who are directly involved in managing the business. Examples of internal users include business owners who are directly involved in managing the business, board of directors, managerial personnel, and the second is the external users, those who are not directly involved in managing the business. Examples of external users include existing and potential investors, such as external um, stockholders who are not directly involved in managing the business, lenders, uh, examples, banks, and creditors, uh, examples, or the suppliers, government agencies like Bureau of Internal Revenue, BIR, Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, non-managerial employer, employees, customers, and the public. So, i-discuss natin siya, bakit importante sa mga users na to yung financial information ng isang business? Sa external user like investor, bakit importante? For example, investor ka na ng isang company. Siyempre, kailangan mo financial information ng business para makapag-decide ka whether to hold or sell investment in stocks. Or kung hindi ka pa naman investor, potential investor ka pa lang, importante yun sa'yo para makapag-decide ka whether or not to buy shares of stock. Bakit? As an investor, makikita mo yung financial information ng isang business kung okay yung performance ng business. Pag ba nakikita mong palugi na siya, pa-close na siya, mag invest ka pa ba? Or, i-hold mo pa ba yung investment mo or ibibenta mo na siya? So, yun yung importance niya for the existing investors and potential investors. For the lender or supplier, and sino-sino ba tong lender or supplier? Ito yung mga banko na nagpapautang sa isang business. Or, ito yung mga nagbebenta ng inventories, for example, uh, ng utang. Kunwari, bibili sa'yo ng inventories yung business, pero utang. Bakit importante sa kanila? Bakit kailangan nilang malaman yung financial information mo bago kanila pa utangin? Siyempre, si lender or banko, kailangan nilang makita yung performance mo. Nagbabayad ka ba ng utang? Or kumikita ka ba para may pambayad ka ng ipapautang niya sa'yo? Ganon din kay supplier. Papautangin ba kita? Nagbabayad ka ba talaga? So, kailangan, ganun din ang importansya sa kanila nung financial information ng business mo. So, may mga questions na kailangan nilang masagot. Shall I invest in this business? Is this a profitable undertaking? Shall I lend money to this business? Does this business have the ability to pay back my loan? So, kailangan nilang makita yung financial performance mo to, to assess kung kaya mong mag-generate ng revenue or meron kang papasok na pera galing sa operations mo. So, moving forward. So, ito siya. Ito yung mga nabanggit ko ng mga users. 
So, moving forward, ito yung brief history lang ng accounting. Accounting can be traced as far back as the prehistoric times since the dawn of civilization when mankind began to engage in trade, perhaps more than 10,000 years ago. Methods of record record keeping and accounting have been invented. As early as 8,500 BC, accounting has already existed. Archaeologists have found clay tokens as old as 8,500 BC in Mesopotamia, which were usually coins, discs, spheres, and pellets. These tokens correspond to commodities like ship, clothing, or bread. They were used in the Middle West in keeping records. After some time, the tokens were replaced by wet clay tablets. During such time, experts concluded this to be the start of the art of writing. Other ancient civilizations keeping account records are Babylonia, Egypt, China, and Greece. So in the Middle Ages, 13th and 15th centuries, trade flourished in places such as Florence, Venice, and Genoa. This has brought advancement in account-keeping methods. In 1211 AD, one of the systems in accounting was kept by a Florentine banker. However, the system was primitive as the concept of equality for entries was absent. Double entry records first came out during 1340 AD in Genoa. In 1494, the first systematic record-keeping dealing with the double entry recording system was formulated by Luca Pascioli, a Franciscan monk and mathematician. The double entry recording system was included in Pascioli's book titled Summa de Arithmetica, Geometria, Proportioni, and Proportionista, published on November 10, 1494 in Venice. The concept of double entry recording is being used to this day. Thus, Luca Pascioli is considered as the father of modern accounting. So, yan lang yung brief history of accounting. So, tandaan nyo lang, si Luca Pascioli, ang father of modern accounting. So, moving forward ulit. So, these are the common branches of accounting. Financial accounting. Ano ba yung service na napoprovide? General record keeping. Example is the maintenance of journals and ledgers. Preparation of general purpose financial statements. Sino ang gumagamit nito? All businesses use financial accounting in their record keeping. These records provide information that is also used in the other branches of accounting. Businesses prepare general purpose FS financial statements at least annually for the use of lenders, investors, or government regulatory bodies. Next is the management accounting. Preparation of specifically tailored management reports. This is required by management to aid them in performing management functions. So, in management accounting, it involves the accumulation and communication in information per used by internal users. So, mas pang internal user to. An offshoot of management accounting is management advisory services, which include services to clients on matters of accounting, finance, business policies, organization procedures, product costs, distribution, and many other phases of business conduct and operations. In government accounting, so it refers to the accounting for the government and its instrumentalities focusing attention on the custody of public funds, the purpose or purposes to which those funds are committed, and the responsibility and accountability of the individuals entrusted with those funds. 
sinong nagre-require nito? Siyempre yung mga government and its agencies. Next is auditing. In auditing, it involves the inspection of an entity's financial statements or business processes to ascertain their correspondence with an established criteria. So, dito yung nag express sila ng opinion kung nagko-comply yung company sa mga... So, yun. Businesses with gross quarterly revenues of 150,000 are required to have their financial statements audited by an independent certified public accountant. Next is the tax accounting. In tax accounting, the preparation of tax returns and rendering of tax advice is important such as determination of tax consequences of certain proposed business and divorce. In cost accounting, so cost accounting is the systematic recording and analysis of the cost of materials, labor, and overhead incident to the production of goods or rendering of services. Ano naman yung accounting education? So this refers to teaching accounting and accounting related subjects in an organized learning environment. It is a process of facilitating the acquisition, knowledge, and skills regarding one or more of the other branches of accounting. And last is the accounting research. It pertains to the careful analysis of economic events and other variables to understand their impact on decisions. Accounting research includes a broad range of topics which may be related to one or more of the other branches of accounting, the economy as a whole, or the market environment. So, these are the common branches of accounting. So, kapag graduate ka ng accounting or may knowledge ka sa accounting, ito yung mga pwedeng maging expertise mo. Pwede ka sa financial accounting, management accounting, government accounting, auditing, tax accounting, cost accounting, accounting education or academe kung nasaan ako ngayon at accounting research. So next, these are the different forms of business organizations. Ito, important ito. So merong sole proprietor, partnership, corporation, or cooperative. So, dito sa subject na to, ang matatouch or madidiscuss natin ay sole proprietor, partnership, and corporation. So, overview lang muna. So, sa sole or single proprietorship, it is owned, it is a business that is owned by only one individual. So, it is the most common and simplest form of a business organization. The business owner is called a sole proprietor. A sole proprietorship is registered with the Department of Trade and Industry. Next is the partnership. Partnership is a business that is owned by two or more individuals who entered into a contract to carry to carry on the business and divide among themselves the earnings therefrom. So, ito yung mga magfa-friends or magkakapatid, magkakafamily na gumagawa ng isang business para paghati-hatian yung profit ng business na yun. So, anong tawag sa kanila? The business owners are called partners. A partnership is registered with the Securities and Exchange Commission. Next is corporation. A corporation is also owned by more than one individual. However, unlike a partnership, a corporation is created by operation of law rather than a contract. Ownership in, an, in a corporation is, ex, is represented by shares of stocks. The owners are called stockholders or shareholders. A corporation is an artificial being or a juridical person, meaning in the eyes of the law, a corporation is like a person, separate from its owners. 
Therefore, a corporation can transact on its own, have its own properties, incur its, incur its own obligations, and sue or be sued. For example, when you buy goods from a corporate business, you're actually transacting with the corporation and not its owners. If you get sick from consuming the goods, you will sue the corporation and not its owners. So, meron siyang sariling katauhan. Hindi mo pwedeng habulin yung mga nagpatayo o may-ari ng isang kumpanya. Kasi ang hahabulin mo yung corporation mismo. So, on the other hand, a partnership also has a juridical personality. Meron din naman sa partnership. However, unlike for corporations, the partners are viewed as agents of the partnership, meaning the partners transact on behalf of the partnership. For example, if you transact with the partner of a business, you are transacting with the partnership through the partner. While if you transact with a stockholder, this does not necessarily mean that you are transacting with the corporation. So the incorporators or yung founders of a corporation shall not be less than five, but not more than 15 individuals. So hindi siya dapat less than five, at hindi rin din siya more than 15, one five. However, a corporation can have as many stockholders as its authorized capitalization permits. So, a corporation is registered with the Securities and Exchange Commission or SEC. Fourth, cooperative. A cooperative is also owned by more than one individual. However, a cooperative is formed in accordance with the provisions of the Philippine Cooperative Code of 2008. The owners of a cooperative are called members. From the root word cooperative, a cooperative is an association of individuals who join together to contribute capital and cooperate in order to achieve certain goals. So yung mga co um, member ng cooperative, member ang tawag sa kanila. So for example, a group of farmers may form a cooperative to acquire delivery trucks to be used in transporting their produce to the market. In here, the farmers voluntarily join together to achieve a common goal, which is to address their need to get their produce to the market. Another concept of a cooperative is that members need to patronize the cooperative's, cooperative's goods or services. In the example, the member farmers shall hire delivery trucks from the cooperative rather than from other businesses. If the cooperative earns profit, a farmer can recover his costs through patronage refunds. Patronage refund pertains to the profit that a cooperative returns to its owners. It should be noted that a member who has not patronized any of the services of the cooperative for an unreasonable period of time may be removed from the cooperative upon the majority vote of the board of directors. A cooperative also has juridical personality similar to a corporation. The founding members of a cooperative shall not be less than 15 individuals. However, a cooperative can have as many members as its bylaws by permit. A cooperative is registered with the Cooperative Development Authority or tinatawag na CDA. So kung kanina yung Corporation is SEC. Itong co cooperative is CDA or Cooperative Development Authority. So, tignan natin what are the advantages and disadvantages of the different forms of business. Start natin kay sole proprietorship. So, ang advantage sa sole proprietorship, you are the boss and you keep all the profits. So, ikaw lang wala kang kahati. Sa'yo lang lahat ng profit ng business mo. However, you assume all the risk of loss. So kapag nalugi, ikaw lang din ang lugi. Lugi mo din lahat. Next is, decision making is simple because you have complete control over the business. Ikaw lang magdidesisyon. Wala ka nang kailangan kausapin. Kapag gusto mong mag-decide, mag-decide ka kaagad. 
However, ang disadvantage nito, you take all responsibility and rely mostly on yourself in making decisions. Hindi ka makakapag-consult sa ibang kasama mo sa business kasi ikaw lang ang may-ari. Next advantage, relatively easier and less costly to form because there are fewer formal business requirements. Unlike other form of business, si sole proprietorship, i-register mo lang siya kay DTI. However, sa disadvantage niya, it is more difficult to raise capital because you rely mostly on your personal assets and loans to initially finance the business. So, ikaw lang ang magre-raise ng pera para gamitin capital sa business mo. Another advantage is lower extent of government regulations and relatively lower taxes. Pero disadvantage, you are personally liable for the debts and obligations of the business. So kapag may utang yung business mo, pwede ka niyang habulin hanggang sa personal um, assets mo as the sole proprietor. In the partnership, so advantage, better business decisions can be made because two heads are better than one. So, pwedeng dalawa kayong mag-desisyon. Da- pwedeng dalawa kayong mag-brainstorming. Kaso, sa disadvantage, making business decisions may give rise to conflict among the partners. So, kapag hindi kayo nagkasundo, magkakaroon ng conflict as business partners. Another advantage is, you share the business risk and the responsibility of running the business with your partner. Advantage yun. Pwede kayong mag-share ng responsibilities. Ang disadvantage naman, you don't keep all the profits because you need to share them with your partners. May kahati ka, syempre. Another advantage, compared to corporations and cooperatives, A partnership is easier to form because only a contractual agreement between the partners is needed. So, meron lang kontrata. Ang disadvantage nito is there is a limited life in the sense that a partnership can be easily dissolved by the withdrawal, retirement, death, or insanity of one of the partners. Kapag may nawala, may umayaw na partner, madidissolve na yung partnership. Advantage Greater capital compared to a sole proprietorship. Mas madami kayong pwedeng maghati-hati para mag-raise ng capital. Pero, lesser capital siya compared to a corporation. Advantage, relatively lower extent of government regulation compared to corporations. Mas konti pa rin ang government regulations niya. Another disadvantage, A partnership is tax like a corporation, except for a general professional partnership. Another disadvantage is there is an unlimited liability. The partners can be held liable for partnership debts up to their personal assets. So, possible yon kung partner ka. Pwedeng habulan pati yung mga personal assets mo. How about corporation? So, in corporation... A stockholder who is not a member of the corporation's board of director is relieved from managerial responsibilities. Only the stockholders that are elected as members of the board of directors and those they hire or appoint are tasked with managerial responsibilities. This can be an advantage because a regular investor does not need to work for the corporation to earn income. Ang disadvantage naman, your say on corporate affairs depends on the number of shares you own. Those who own sh- more shares are the bosses and enjoy a larger share of the corporation's profits. So, wala ka masyadong voice. Depende kung gano'ng kalaki ang ownership mo sa corporation. Advantage, limited liability of the owners because stockholders are liable for corporate debts. Only up to the amount they are invested. So, hindi pwedeng habulin yung personal assets mo. Kung magkano lang yung na-invest mo, yun lang yung liability mo. 
as a stockholder. Disadvantage, a corporation is more difficult and more costly to form because there are more formal business requirements. Mas mas complicated siya compared sa sole proprietorship and partnership. Advantage, greater capital and is in raising additional funds because a corporation can issue shares to a wider extent of investors. Pero, mas malaki yung taxes and there is a greater extent of government regulation. Another advantage, if the corporation is listed, you can easily transfer your shares to other investors by selling them in the stock market. Many investors earn profit this way by buying shares at a cheap price, wait for prices to go up, and then sell them. This activity is referred to as stock trading. However, unlike for a sole proprietorship or a partnership where business profits are easily distributed to the owners, in a corporation, you have to wait for the board of directors to declare dividends before you get your share in the profits of the corporation. So, antayin mo munang mag-declare ng dividends para maka-earn ka ng profit share ng profit sa corporation unlike sa sole proprietor pag kumita sa iyo na pag partnership pag hati-hatian niyo lang another advantage is the unlimited life in the sense that the withdrawal retirement death or insanity of one of the stockholders does not dissolve the corporation unlike sa partnership sabi ko nga kanina pag may nagwithdraw namatay nagretire madidissolve na yung partnership sa corporation hindi ganon Kahit na may mag-withdraw, mag-retire, or mamatay na stockholder, hindi niya madidissolve yung corporation. Although, a corporation has a legal life of 50 years. Pwede naman siyang i-renew for an indefinite number of renewals. Last, cooperative. So, unlike in a corporation, your say on cooperative affairs is not affected by the number of shares you own. This is because in a cooperative, each member is entitled to one vote regardless of his or her shareholders, shareholdings. However, members with larger shareholders or shareholdings are entitled to larger amount of profit. So, sabi ko kanina sa a corporation, Yung voice mo or yung say mo sa corporation affairs ay nakadepende sa ownership mo. Pero dito sa cooperative, basta member ka, entitled ka to vote. So, yon Ang disadvantage, a cooperative is prone to poor management. Cooperatives are, more often than not, managed by members who are elected as board of directors rather than by employed professional managers. So, since there is a one-member, one-vote policy in cooperative, in influential members tend to dominate the election process. The result is that those who get elected may not be the ones who are most qualified for the task. For example, may isang member na mas influential siya. Pwedeng i-vote siya ng mga other members para manalo siya. Kahit hindi siya qualified for the task. So, yun yung disadvantage. For the advantage, a cooperative is generally exempt from paying taxes. This is the main advantage of a cooperative and the most common reason why cooperatives are organized. Wala siyang tax, generally. Moreover, a cooperative may receive assistance from the government. And, um, however, on the other hand, a cooperative is susceptible to corruption. Due to its management structure and lack of profit motive, the elected officers may be inclined to act on their personal interests. Another advantage is compared to a corporation, a cooperative is easier and less costly to form because there are fewer formal business requirements. For the disadvantage, the cooperative code places some restrictions on the distribution of a cooper cooperative's profit to its members. More specifically, the code requires a cooperative to appropriate a portion of its annual profit to some funds. 
So only the remaining portion can be distributed to the members, hindi lahat. Unlike sa um, sole proprietorship or partnership. Furthermore, when the cooperative is dissolved, the amount accumulated in a fund called the reserve fund shall not be returned to the members but rather donated to another cooperative or to the community. Another advantage, limited liability siya sa cooperative. The members are liable for cooperative debts only up to the amount they have invested. Parang sa corporation din. However, disadvantage compared to a corporation, it is more difficult for cooperative to sustain growth. This is in part because of the lack of profit motive and lack of management expertise. Moreover, a cooperative success strongly depends on the members' cooperation and members are not always willing to cooperate. The success of a business depends on continuing effort. Sadly, Many cooperatives are zealous at the start but fail to sustain continuing effort resulting to the warning, warning down of their activities. This does not mean, though, that all cooperatives are small businesses. There are many multi-billionaire cooperatives in our country. Some might be located in your community. Another advantage is the unlimited life. In the sense that the withdrawal, retirement, death, or insanity of one of the members that does not dissolve the cooperative, gaya ng corporation. Although a cooperative has a legal life of 50 years, this can be renewed for an indefinite number of years. So another disadvantage naman, unlike in a corporation where the stockholder can freely transfer his shares in a cooperative, there are restrictions on the transfer of a member's shares. For example, the approval of the board of directors must first be obtained before a member can transfer his or her shares. So those are the advantage and disadvantages of the different forms of businesses. So ano, ba, ano naman yung different types of business according to activities? So there are three types, service business, merchandising or trading, and manufacturing. Anong differences nito? So let's discuss muna. Service business is one that offers services as its main product rather than physical goods. A service business may offer professional skills, expertise, advice, lending service, and similar services. Ano yung examples? Schools, professionals, accounting firm, law firm, electrician, etc. Hospitals and clinics, banks and other financial institutions, hotel and restaurants, transportation and travel like taxi operator, travel agency, etc. Entertainment and event planners, gaya ng wedding planners, concert promoters, etc. Yun yung mga service businesses. How about merchandising business? A merchandising business or trading business is one that buys and sells goods without changing their physical form. Examples of merchandising businesses include General merchandise resellers, gaya ng grocery stores, department stores, hardware stores, pharmacies, online stores, online stores, sari-sari stores, etc. Distrib distributors and dealers, rice wholesalers, vegetable dealers, second-hand car dealers. So, ito yung mga bumibili at nagbibenta ng goods na hindi binabago yung physical form. Sila yung merchandising or trading business. And last is the manufacturing business. A manufacturing business is one that buys raw materials and processes them into final products. Unlike a merchandising business, a manufacturing business changes the physical form of the goods it has purchased in a production process. So ito yung bibili ka ng raw materials at ipaprocess mo para makagawa ka ng final products. For example, a business that buys and sells eggs is a merchandising business. On the other hand, a business that buys eggs and uses the eggs as ingredient in making cakes for sale is a manufacturing business. 
Examples of manufacturing business include car manufacturers, gaya ng Toyota, Isuzu, Volkswagen, etc. Or technology companies, Apple, Samsung, Sun, Sony, etc. Food processing companies, San Miguel Pure Food, Silver Swan, etc. Factories, clothing factories, animal feed factories, plastic factories, plastic wear factories, etc. Some businesses called hybrid businesses engage in more than one type of activity. For example, a restaurant uses ingredients to cook a meal. So, manufacturing yun. Pero nagbebenta rin siya ng Coca-Cola drinks like merchandising. So, man- merchandising din siya. Nagsaserve din siya ng food to customers. So, service din siya. Nevertheless, a hybrid business is classified into one of the major types based on the activity that is most in line with the business purposes. So, restaurants are expected to fill in customer orders and provide dining services. Thus, more on service type business pa rin siya. Kahit na within the business, makikita mo na nagmamanufacture sila, nagmamerchandise sila, nagsiservice din sila. So, kung ano yung pinaka serve uh, pinaka type of business doon sa business na yon yun yung service type niya like the restaurants these are service type business let's discuss the advantages and disadvantages of the different types of business so let's start with service business so syempre one of its advantage is you don't need to worry about inventory costs, warehousing, and distribution costs because you don't have any inventory. You only have some minimal supplies necessary in providing your services. Ano naman ang disadvantage? You may not have a pl- flexible personal time because you need to be directly involved in providing a service to a customer. You can stock inventory but not service. Until your business is big enough to be able to hire other professionals to do the work for you, you will need to render the services yourself. Another advantage is you may only need a small capital. Kasi nga, ang puhunan mo ay skill set and you only need yourself to render a service. If you are a manufacturer, you need to buy raw materials and machinery to produce your product. So, pag-service, wala kang masyadong kapital. Skills mo lang ang puhunan mo. However, service businesses normally normally suffer first from decline in demand during times of economic difficulty. This is because most of services are perceived as luxuries rather than necessities for survival. Next is, advan- next advantage you are perceived as an expert in your chosen field. So, advantage yun, expert ka sa field na yun. However, your business success depends on your credibility. Magaling ka ba sa mismong expertise na chinos mo? Another disadvantage is since a service business is founded on good reputation, it is more costly to commit an error in a service business compared to to a merchandising business. So, kapag nagkamali ka sa pag-render mo ng service, possible na hindi ka nakunin ulit ng mga customers mo. Yon. How about in merchandising business? Compared to a manufacturing firm, you may need a much lower start at start-up capital because you don't need to acquire machineries to produce your goods. Siyempre, magbabuy and sell ka lang. However, Disadvantage, you need to have a retail store to display your goods and the store must be in a strategic location for it to attract more customers. So, kailangan mo ng store. Pero nowadays kasi, um, pwede nang ibenta ng online. Another advantage, you can take advantage of price fluctuations. For example, when goods are on sale, you can acquire them at a discounted price and resell them at a much higher price. You can do this in a service business. So kapag nagkaroon ng sale, pwede kang bumi- magbumili ng madami or pwede mong i-take yung opportunity ng 
discount. Pero ibibenta mo siya sa regular prices. Disadvantage, less flexibility in managing costs. This is because the cost of your goods is based primarily on the purchase price, which you do not control. Another advantage is lower cost of quality. This is because what you buy is what you sell. Disadvantage, keeping track of inventory is tedious, most especially when you are selling numerous and varied items with fast turnover rates. So, mahirap i-monitor yung inventory mo pag iba-iba yung products. Also, you can incur additional costs due to spoilage, theft, breakages, damages, and obsolescence. Another advantage is it is much easier to start a merchandising business because you don't need to have an expertise or a special skill. And you don't need to have invented a new product or have conceptualized an innovative idea for an existing product. Hindi mo na kailangan ng innovation. Kasi kung ano na yung binibili mo, yun na yung ibibenta mo. So, it's an advantage. However, self-satisfaction is low because you did not produce the products you sold. So, wala ka masyadong parang idea doon sa product mo. Wala ka masyadong naiambag na idea. E, benta mo lang kung ano yung binibili mo. So, yung self-satisfaction is low dito sa merchandising business. How about sa manufacturing business? Advantage is you have a high growth potential. Because you can tap into a wider market and con can produce in large quantities. However, you need a high startup capital to acquire machineries, to um employ people, and to acquire a big space for your production. Another advantage is you have the opportunity to establish a brand that could, that could last longer than your lifetime. This is the ultimate dream of most entrepreneurs. However, conceptualizing a viable manufacturing business is difficult. This is why more entrepreneurs would rather engage in merchandising. Another advantage is the high self-satisfaction. Knowing that consumers are happy and satisfied with a tangible product you have produced brings you pride and joy. However, you need to be continuously innovative and abreast of changes in technology. So, kung ano yung bagong um, development, dapat nakikisabay ka doon. If another company comes up with a better and cheaper product, your product will automatically lose demand. Another advantage is that you may not need to have a strategically located retail store to display your products because you can sell directly to wholesalers rather than to end consumers. However, warehousing and logistics costs can be high. Another advantage is you can have a better pricing policy because mass production can decrease. However, you rely on raw materials. You need to manage them properly to ensure that they are available when they are needed. This is because a shortage in a raw material can disrupt your operation and that can be very costly. For example, when cooking rice, all the ingredients you need must be available. You cannot cook the rice now and just add the water later on. In a merchandising business, if you run out of specific good, you don't necessarily need to close your store because you can still sell other goods. As a merchandising, kapag may kulang kang ingredients, hindi mo mabubuo yung finished product mo. Another advantage is greater flexibility in managing costs. However, managing a manufacturing business can be difficult because production processes are often complicated and there is always some room for improvement, although many skilled managers may take this positively as a challenge. Also, more accounting work is needed in manufacturing business. That is why there is a separate branch of accounting formed primarily for manufacturing, manufacturing businesses. So this ends the first chapter of 
our subject. So I hope that you understand all of my discussions. So for any questions and reactions, you may raise this in the class in our Microsoft Teams. Thank you.